Here's a list of all the items we'll cover during this orientation. We're going to give you an overview of Advocacy Day, share the day's schedule, and talk about making introductions, networking, and carrying on a conversation. Then we'll get into the core purpose of Advocacy Day and present the Girl Scout legislative agenda items, which are the topics Girl Scouts wants to advocate for within our government. We'll talk a bit about the luncheon and some meal etiquette. Next, we'll go into detail about the meetings you'll have with legislators, which will include some logistics and meeting tips. Finally, we'll wrap up with what to wear and contact information for your local council should you have any questions. There are a few points where we're going to ask you to pause the video and think about something specific. If you're someone that likes to take notes, you'll want to have something nearby. Okay, here we go. The Wisconsin Girl Scout Advocacy Day began in 2012 and annually gathers together the Wisconsin Girl Scout Councils at the Wisconsin State Capitol in Madison. During that day, we are focused on bringing the Girl Scout legislative agenda to the attention of our legislature and raise up the impact of Girl Scouts on the health of our communities, both locally and statewide. We do this through public gathering in the morning and visits to our legislature's office in the afternoon. The day is bridged with a luncheon featuring a keynote speaker. The day will also be filled with networking opportunities, meeting new people, speaking up about issues that are important to you, and having a platform that could be impactful to your community. Here's what the general schedule will look like for the day. We're going to give you a quick overview, and then we'll go into some of the information in more detail throughout the rest of the orientation. Once you arrive to the Madison Capitol, you'll have an opportunity to network with Girl Scouts from all the Wisconsin Girl Scout Councils and with any legislators that drop by for the morning session. There will be a formal welcome and introductions made, possibly by a CEO from one of the Girl Scout Councils, and some honorary remarks from one or more legislators. Then there will be one girl representative from each council that will have an opportunity to speak to the group about her Girl Scout experiences that relate to the Girl Scout legislative agenda. If you are the girl that has been chosen for your council to be the girl speaker, your local council will reach out to you with more details so you're prepared in advance. After the girl speakers, a few council representatives will lead the legislature in an investiture ceremony to be part of Honorary Girl Scout Troop 1912. CEOs may look for girls to help in the legislators, so if this is something that interests you, you'll want to know where the Girl Scout pin is placed and how to do a Girl Scout handshake. There will then be a few closing remarks made by a council CEO before moving to the rotunda to take a large group photo. After the group photo, everyone walks just a couple blocks to the luncheon location. At lunch, you'll hear from the keynote speaker and enjoy continued networking opportunities and discussion at your table regarding the Girl Scout legislative agenda. Once the luncheon wraps up, everyone will walk back to the Capitol and girls will have the chance to meet with legislators to talk about issues that are important to them. Then everyone departs their, for home their separate ways. Okay, now we're going to dig into some of the details. First and foremost, let's talk about making a proper and confident introduction. There are many ways to start talking to someone new. The most important thing is that you're comfortable introducing yourself to other people. Say something to break the ice. Listen and ask questions. Prepare some basic answers about yourself so you're ready to answer questions. Have an exit plan to end the conversation. And smile, be confident. Let's look at this step by step. There are many ways to start talking to someone new. We recommend that you find what works best for you. Sue and I will now demonstrate a simple break the ice introduction. Hello, my name is Leanne. Good morning, I'm Sue. Nice to meet you. It's great to meet you too. Okay, now here's a tip on handshakes. It's really awkward when someone shakes your hand and it's a weak grip, or maybe they just touch the tips of your fingers. We suggest practicing a firm and confident grip but not so firm you'll hurt the other person you're meeting. Once you've broken the ice, you need to keep the conversation going. To do this, have a couple simple questions ready, such as, how are you? Where are you from? How was your trip here? Are you having a good time? You can also come up with some of your own questions. 
Conversation isn't always about asking questions. Eventually, the people you're talking to are going to ask you some of the same questions that you're asking them. So you should be ready to answer these questions too. Add in details to keep the conversation interesting. Take turns asking and responding to questions. Just like Crush tells his son Squirt that he needs to have an exit buddy in Finding Nemo, you'll want to have an exit plan when making introductions because you want to meet as many people as you can. Here are a few ways to leave a conversation politely. You could say things like, well, it's been lovely talking to you. Nice to meet you. I hope you don't mind, but I'd like to meet some other people. Enjoy your time here. As you say these phrases, hold out your hand for another handshake. This will make it clear that you're ending the conversation. And while you're talking with others, don't forget to smile and show your confidence. Smiles are inviting. People will remember your smile. If you're not comfortable introducing yourself to new people, you can practice at home or with a friend so that when you meet someone new, you're ready and confident. Now that we've covered making introductions, let's talk about networking. Networking is an exchange between you and another person. It involves establishing a relationship with people who may become your friends, peers, or mentors as you go through life. They may be able to help you advance your goals, just as you may be able to help them advance their goals. You will have many opportunities to network throughout Advocacy Day, and we suggest you take advantage of them. Here are a few tips you might find helpful. You'll see how some of the networking tips tie to the making introductions information we just shared. First, be a good listener. You might think networking is all about what you say, but listening is actually an essential skill. The person you're talking to will know if you're not paying close attention to what they're saying. Asking thoughtful questions in response to what you hear is one way to show you're listening. Have a real conversation. Try and cultivate a genuine connection with others. All of your conversations don't have to be Girl Scout related. It's okay to ask people questions about themselves and their lives. You might find a lasting connection based on your interests. That commonality may even be what builds a relationship after Advocacy Day. We will give you some more example questions coming up shortly. Don't circulate too much. Circulating around the room too quickly can look excessive. You won't remember what anyone is saying if you move from one person to another at a very fast pace. Others may notice you always looking over their shoulder to see who else you want to talk to, and that's not a good feeling to have. Try and have more in-depth conversations that mean something to you both. That way, the relationships you make will stick. Be open to anything. The best plan is to have no plan at all. Instead, be open to speaking to anyone about anything. Merely being approachable could open doors you never knew were there. And be yourself. No matter what, networking requires you to be yourself when you speak to and connect with other people. Keeping this tip and the other tips in mind will make you be even more comfortable and effective while networking during Advocacy Day. So, as you're meeting different people throughout the day, it would be helpful to prepare a few questions you can ask others. Questions for Girl Scouts could include things like, tell me about your favorite thing in Girl Scouts or your most memorable experience. Why do you participate in Girl Scouts? How does Girl Scouts make a difference in your life? How have you had an impact in your community through Girl Scouts? And when networking with the legislator, you might ask, were you a Girl Scout as a girl? Tell me about your most memorable Girl Scout experience. What part of the state do you represent? What do you enjoy most about being a legislator? How have you had an impact in your community as a legislator? It's also good to think about how you might answer these or other questions that someone might ask you as you prepare to participate in network during Advocacy Day. So you've heard us mention the Girl Scout legislative agenda a few times now. Here's where we get into the core of what our purpose is during Advocacy Day. You'll notice as we're talking about the legislative agenda, there will be a lot of text on the screen. That's because this information is very important and we want to ensure you have a basic understanding of these important issues. First, we're gonna start with the why. Girl Scouts of the USA is eager to work with members of US Congress 
to advance policies that foster girls' leadership development, together we can address a range of issues that will benefit all girls across the nation. At the core, Girl Scouts aims to inspire girls like you to be leaders in our own lives by helping you learn to raise your voices and advocate for issues and ideas that are important to you. We encourage you to speak your minds and we support you as you take civic action to drive positive change in the world. More than 50 million women can call themselves Girl Scout alums. Over half of female entrepreneurs and business owners are alums, as well as the majority of female members of Congress and every female secretary, secretary of state in US history. Now more than ever, our country needs Girl Scouts. For more than 100 years, we are an organization that offers all girls like you the skills and leadership opportunities you need to prepare yourselves for a lifetime of success. It does so in an all-girl environment that is supportive of your needs and nurtures your potential. Girls need public policies that champion support for all girl and girl-led safe spaces and honor the unique developmental needs of girls in relation to extracurricular activities like Girl Scouting. Girls like you need programs and initiatives that allow you to grow up healthy and strong, develop the skills you need to excel in an ever-changing workforce, and make a positive mark in your communities and the world. In partnership with local Girl Scout councils, Girl Scouts of the USA works with policymakers at all levels to advance the cause of girls in your limitless potential. To build tomorrow's leaders, Girl Scouts is prioritizing several public policy goals in Congress, which we'll take a look at next. The first legislative agenda item is to promote economic opportunities for girls with a focus on STEM and entrepreneurial and financial literacy skills. Let's take a look at the focus on STEM skills first. Women continue to be underrepresented in STEM fields. If the US is to maintain our competitive edge in the global economy, we need to make sure young people, especially girls, can take on careers in STEM. Therefore, Girl Scouts supports policy efforts to invest in STEM education programs through federal partnerships with community organizations and school. Promote proven techniques for engaging girls in STEM, including single gender learning envi environments and hands-on inquiry-based learning. Engage girls in engineering and computer science to prepare them for the 21st century STEM workforce. Introduce girls to diverse role models and mentors in STEM. Expand out-of-school time STEM programming to girls and underrepresented minority groups. Encourage federal agencies to invest in developing STEM career pathways for girls and underrepresented minority groups. Girl Scouts is committed to ensuring every girl has chances to explore and build interest in STEM-related fields. And we do this in an all-girl, girl-led space. Through Girl Scout programming, which includes a ton of STEM badges, girls are equipped to become coders, video game designers, inventors, naturalists, scientists, app developers, cybersecurity experts, robotics engineers, and the list goes on. Girl Scouts of the USA has pledged to provide two and a half million girls with hands-on STEM experiences by the year 2025. We hope through this initiative that a new generation of girls will be inspired to serve as the confident STEM leaders our country needs. Now let's take a look at entrepreneurial and financial literacy skills. Whether a girl chooses to become a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, runs her family's finances, or becomes an entrepreneur who starts her own business, Girls must develop financial knowledge and business skills to make important life decisions and power their future possibilities. Unfortunately, financial literacy is not currently a standard component of US schools. Therefore, Girl Scouts supports policy efforts to ensure all girls gain financial literacy and entrepreneurial skills. Bolster the role of youth serving organizations in promoting real world financial literacy and entrepreneurial experiences in all girl environments. Expand federal initiatives that support financial literacy and entrepreneurial programs through partnerships with community organizations and schools. Leverage educational technology to strengthen the financial literacy capabilities of youth. 
Entrepreneurship and financial literacy have been the cornerstones of the Girl Scout experience for more than 100 years. With the Girl Scout Cookie Program, as one example, girls develop important skills that include goal setting, decision making, money management, people skills, and business ethics. This program gives girls the perfect foundation for launching their own business ventures down the road and are skills that can be used in any career or in the home. All right, we just got done reviewing the first Girl Scout legislative agenda item. Now what? We would like you to pause the video and think about how you would answer the questions on the screen as they relate to increasing girls' exposure to STEM and financial literacy and entrepreneurial skills. Feel free just to think through these questions on your own in your head, or you could jot down your thoughts in your cell phone or on a piece of paper. You could also have a conversation with someone nearby. Here are the questions. Why is this issue important to you? What do you think could be done to support the issue or make things bigger? What do you think people need to know about this issue? Go ahead and pause the video now to answer these questions. Okay, let's take a look at the next legislative agenda item, which to encourage girls to embrace a healthy lifestyle. This agenda item also has two focuses. One is to expand girls' access to outdoor adventure, and the other is to prevent bullying and relational aggression, thereby fostering healthy relationships among girls. Let's take a look at the focus on the outdoors first. When exploring and having fun in the outdoors, girls can sometimes feel pressure and social anxiety that results from a co-ed environment. Therefore, Girl Scout supports policy efforts to encourage all girls to participate in transformative outdoor experiences regularly and in varied ways. Engage girls in under-resourced and marginalized communities who may have limited opportunities in outdoor experiences. Provide girls with opportunities to explore solutions to conservation-related issues, thereby advancing their understanding of the natural sciences, natural resource management, and related STEM careers. <clears throat> Engage girls in environmental stewardship and advocacy so they can learn the value and, in the process, learn to advocate for others. The outdoors is a fundamental component of Girl Scouting that builds girls who are capable and advocate for outdoor adventures. By participating in outdoor experiences, girls feel connected to the environment and are strengthening their self-reliance, perseverance, and leadership skills. Through Girl Scout programming, which includes many journeys and badges, Girls can go mountain climbing, hiking, learn about environmental conservation, and so much more. Now, let's talk about fostering healthy relationships among girls by preventing bullying and relational aggression. According, according to the Girl Start Research Institute, about 30% of girls have experienced some form of bullying or relational aggression from their peers. We know that girls' bullying experiences are more relational than physical, often involving teasing, exclusion, and cruel behavior on social media, all of which are difficult for adults to notice. Bully girls have higher rates of absenteeism and lower grades and are at increased risk of depression, eating disorders, alcohol and drug abuse, and suicide. Therefore, Girl Scout supports policy efforts to engage local education agencies in providing education and training programs for middle school girls and elementary school youth to reduce relational aggression, bullying, and adolescent violence, resulting in creation of safe schools and communities. Support girl-only bullying prevention initiatives that focuses on relational aggression and girls' unique needs, relationship behaviors, and experiences. Increase federal programs that invest in bullying prevention programs through partnerships with communities and the schools. Girl Scout gives girls a blueprint for developing healthy relationships among peers. Our programming focuses on reducing bullying and in particular, relational aggression and cyberbullying. Okay, I'm reviewing the second Girl Scout legislative agenda item. Again, we would like you to pause the video and think about how you would answer the questions on the screen as they relate to increasing girls' outdoor experiences and reducing bullying and relational aggression. 
If you would like, again, find someone nearby to chat with, feel free uh, to think through the questions in your head or make notes in your cell phone or a piece of paper. Take a moment to answer these questions on your own. Okay, let's take a look at the third le legislative agenda item, which is to foster global citizenship and a global voice for girls. Girl Scouts supports policy efforts around global citizenship to promote education about global issues, particularly those affecting girls and women, and ultimately help girls develop a sense of global citizenship. Promote access to education for girls around the globe. Support awareness of the impact of investing in girls globally, including all girls, single gender spaces and activities. Provide cross-cultural opportunities for girls learning and international travel. Provide opportunities for girls to explore and engage in creating solutions to global issues. Girl Scouts is dedicated to ensuring that girls develop an increased awareness of the larger world around them and understand the relationship to it so they can grow into responsible global citizens. Through Girl Scout programming, girls become responsible and effective global citizens and leaders who recognize new and differing perspectives and connect with others as they take action to make the world a better place. Girls gain valuable cross-cultural competency skills explore and enhance their understanding of issues that affect girls around the globe, and learn how to advocate for change for the greater good. Now, as you reflect on the third legislative agenda item, you know what we're going to ask you to do. Pause the video, think about how you'd answer the questions on this screen, this time as they relate to increasing a fostering global citizenship and a global voice for girls. Again, feel free to talk with someone nearby or answer the questions on your own, and you can take notes in your cell phone or on a piece of paper. All right, let's take a look at the final legislative agenda item, which is to uphold a strong nonprofit community that supports the Girl Scout leadership experience, including Girl Scouts, there are 1.6 million tax exempt organizations in the US and the nonprofit sector who employs 11.4 million workers, which is about 10% of the American workforce. Girl Scouts supports policy efforts around upholding a strong nonprofit community to support tax policies that encourage individuals, charitable donations, which serve as the backbone of all nonprofits. Ensure a healthy, effective, and vibrant nonprofit community that sustains the nation's philanthropic tradition, which means people giving money to nonprofit organizations. Maintain the financial stability of the Girl Scout movement so we can offer the Girl Scout leadership experience to an ever increasing number of girls. Reduce pension premiums, which hinder Girl Scouts' ability to improve girls' lives and develop our nation's future leaders. Girl Scouts is proud to partner with other charitable organizations and coalitions in the nonprofit sector to ensure that nonprofits flourish in providing essential services to our country. We support policies that incentivize charitable giving. Girl Scout supports changes in tax policy that encourage more people to give more, specifically, specifically those who do not currently have access to charitable deduction. Now, you know what to do. Even uh, we think this last legislative agenda item might be a bit uh, tougher to relate to. You may prefer to chat with someone about this one. Pause the video to think about how you might answer the questions on the screen regarding upholding a strong nonprofit community that supports the Girl Scout leadership experience. Again, think through questions on your head or write them down however you'd like. Wow, that was a lot of content. Here's a recap of the Girl Scout legislative agenda items we just went over. First, we highlighted promoting economic opportunities for girls. Remember, this included the focus on providing increased STEM and financial and entrepreneurial experiences for all girls in girl-only spaces and expose girls to role models and mentors. Then, we talked about encouraging girls to embrace a healthy lifestyle 
This included the focus on providing more and varying outdoor experiences for all girls to learn and advocate for the environment and others. This agenda item also included fostering healthy relationships among girls by preventing bullying and relational aggression through an increase in educational and training opportunities, initiatives, and funding. Next, we shared with you information about fostering global citizenship and a global voice for girls. This included education on global issues affecting girls and women, investing in all girls spaces and activities, and creating opportunities for girls to come up with solutions to global issues, such as providing access to education for all girls around the globe. Finally, we highlighted upholding a strong nonprofit community that supports the Girl Scout leadership experience which can be achieved through supporting tax policies that encourage charitable donations and maintaining financial stability to offer more girls Girl Scout experiences. We know that you'll be more comfortable talking about these issues where you have personal experiences, and that is perfectly okay. But by thinking about these issues in advance, you'll be more prepared with some talking points while networking and meeting with the legislators. Now, we're going to switch gears a bit. As we've already shared, we'll be walking to the luncheon. During the luncheon, it is likely that you'll be sitting with some girls and adults from other Girl Scout councils. This is a great opportunity to meet new people and practice those, practice those networking skills. There will be a keynote speaker that will talk with you for about 10 minutes. You'll also have opportunity to ask the keynote speaker questions. Feel free to prepare questions ahead of time. Meals vary at formal luncheons, but a typical luncheon meal is a salad with a protein like grilled chicken, a bread basket, and dessert. If you have any dietary restrictions, please reach out to your council and let them know in advance, but so there's time to make accommodations. Some of you may not have attended a formal luncheon before. That's totally okay. We're going to take a couple minutes to share some key meal etiquette tips with you next. For starters, wash your hands before you sit down at the table. Get rid of all the germs that, you, uh, that could make you or someone else sick. When sitting at the table, sit comfortably, of course, but also sit up straight. The girl in this picture is slouching. It looks like she's bored. Also, try not to move around much at the table. It may disturb others around you. You could also end up spilling your drink or food. There be either paper or cloth napkins at your table setting. Unfold the napkin and place it on your lap when you sit down to eat. It's okay to use the napkin to wipe your mouth while you eat or drink. You can use your hands when you eat breads and whole fruit, but for most everything else you should use a fork and spoon to eat your food. And remember to cut small pieces that are easier to eat. Ask the other people at the table to pass a drink or food to you so you, uh, if you can't re reach your own item, instead of reaching across the table to get it yourself. Be sure to always use may I, please, or thank you when asking for something or when someone hands you uh, something from around the table. Talking with your mouthful is not only super gross, but it could also lead to choking on your food. Also, chew with your mouth closed and try not to chew and drink obnoxiously. Please don't pick your teeth up with your fingers or take food bits out of your mouth at the table. It's kind of disgusting. Speak at a reasonable volume so you're not too loud, but you're also not too quiet where people can't hear you. Try not to interrupt others when they are talking. If someone speaks to you, respond to them politely. It's not polite to speak neg negatively about the food that is served. Try to eat it first, and if you still don't like it, just leave it on the side of your plate. If you need to leave the table, like maybe go to the bathroom, it's polite to say, excuse me, before you get up. After lunch, everyone will walk back to the Capitol building. The afternoon of Advocacy Day is left open for girls to meet with the legislators that represent their communities. This time is meant to be a chance for you to talk with your legislators about issues that are important to you. If you can connect issues back to the current legislation being worked on, that's awesome. What's important is that you're talking about things that are meaningful to you. Girls may be paired up with another girl or walk around in groups to meet with the legislators. Each council may set these meetings up a bit differently. 
Some councils may pre-schedule specific meeting times with legislators, while other councils may encourage girls to drop by their legislators' offices. For drop-ins, girls go to the office of a legislator and ask if they're available to talk with them. Your local council will communicate with you on how, these, how the meetings are set up for your council. Whether dropping by or going to a pre-scheduled meeting, you will want to start by introducing yourself to the office staff and the legislator. Don't forget to shake their hands and to smile. Then ask if they can talk, if they have time to talk with you about issues that you're concerned about. The legislator may ask you questions as well. Pitch your ideas or concerns confidently when speaking with the legislator. When you're done meeting, you'll leave behind a folder for each legislator. These folders are prepared in advance by the Girl Scout Council staff and include a variety of Girl Scout specific information. Now a little about the Girl Scout adults. Each council will allow a certain number of adults to attend for supervisory and logistical purposes. If the adults are walking around with you when you are meeting with the legislators, make sure that you do the talking. Advocacy Day is about girls' voices being heard, and that's you. Legislators may ask the adult with you a question, but know that the adults are being asked to take a step back so that you are the primary communicators that day. Oh, and don't be discouraged if a drop-in or a pre-scheduled meeting ends up being a chance to talk with the legislator's office staff, or if the office door is locked and no one is available. Sometimes their schedules change on short notice, or they're just not available. We've talked about making introductions and networking. Here are a few more meeting tips we'd like to share with you that will come in handy when you're meeting with the legislators. Be brief. You've got a lot of information to communicate and your legislator is busy. Briefly share your information so everyone can be heard. Stay focused. Remember, you are there to talk about Girl Scouts and issues you're concerned about. If someone asks you questions you don't know, it's okay. Just say, I don't know, but I can find out. Use language your legislator will understand. For example, if the legislator asks you what troop you're in and you say, you're Juliet, they may not know what that means. Explain Girl Scout terms in a way others can understand. So instead, you might say, I'm not in a troop. I'm an individually registered member. Be respectful. Your legislator dis if your legislator disagrees with you, you can voice your disappointment, but stay calm and be polite. And finally, say thanks. Show your gratitude and say thanks at the end of your meeting with your legislator. You've been probably wondering how you need to dress for Advocacy Day. We are requesting that all girls participating in Advocacy Day wear your Girl Scout uniform. This includes your Girl Scout sash or vest with khaki pants or skirt and a white shirt. We recommend wearing comfortable shoes as there will be a lot of walking around the Capitol building and to and from the luncheon. Please also dress appropriately for weather conditions. Again, you'll be walking outside to and from the luncheon. We imagine you have already received or will still receive some sort of advocacy day confirmation from your local council. This confirmation may include additional information and specifics around the day schedule, like what time to arrive or travel logistics. Maybe there will be forms that are due, or there are things you will need to prepare in advance or bring with you to Madison. You may learn what is being served for lunch or other information. You will likely also receive the full Girl Scout Legislative Agenda document. When you receive your confirmation, be sure to look through it thoroughly. As we shared at the start of the recording, the information provided in this Advocacy Day orientation applies to all Wisconsin Girl Scout Councils. If you have any specific questions for your local council regarding your council's participation or your role in Advocacy Day, please reach out to your local council for answers. We've included contact information for all Wisconsin councils on this slide for you here. Well, that wraps up the Advocacy Day orientation. Thank you again so much for listening in. We look forward to seeing you all soon.